Hello. You will have seen uh, a video I did a while ago uh, where I demonstrate what happens to uh, domestic video 8 tapes if they get mouldy. And basically the mould that grows on the tape is stronger than the tape. It glues it together, you put the tape in the machine and it will snap. Uh, and I have developed a process for peeling the mould off but it's time consuming and have to charge customers a little bit for the work that goes into clearing the mold from eight millimeter tapes. Now, most uh, other videotapes like uh, a domestic Betamax tape and it's true of VHS tape and others, uh, the tape is a fair bit thicker. So the mold is not usually as strong as the tape. And if you have mold on a tape like this, sometimes you can just play the tape through, perhaps on a gash video recorder, It'll pull the mould off the top and bottom edges of the tape and the tape will be playable enough. Obviously, if you have mould across the surface, the picture quality is terrible, but you can't do an awful lot about that. Now, occasionally, <laughs> you can get this problem. This is a Studio Professional Betacam SP tape and it looks almost identical to a domestic Betamax tape but in many ways it's actually closer to the Video 8 tape because it has a very thin metal tape inside, not the quite thick oxide tape of a domestic Betamax or VHS tape. So the problem can be if that has mould on it, like this one, it'll snap. And worse, even the fact that the tape has now snapped, is that unlike a Video 8 tape, which has you know, it's a fair amount of tape on there to get the mould off, and it takes you know sometimes a good few hours to clear all the mould, there's a lot more tape loaded on one of these. And there's a large size of these too that has even more tape loaded. And clearing the mould off these tapes can be hugely time consuming. But such it is, we have this recording. It's a master tape. There's no other copy of it in, the, in good quality. So uh, despite the fact it's mouldy and snapped, we need to uh, repair it and clear the mould off here to make hopefully something that's playable. There will be some imperfections, but hopefully what we get is good enough. Right, let's start. So in the first instance, taking the tape apart, you know, this, this shell is essentially a Betamax shell. There's no difference. You can see on this one how the tape has been parked in this position for a long time and there is actually mould, visible mould on the surface, albeit not a massive amount. And we've been a little bit lucky here that the snap has been a fairly clean break. Sometimes it can be a long strip going for a number of centimetres and you lose all the footage um, uh, along that line. Also here it's happened extremely close to the uh, take-up spool. So we're going to be in the beginning sequence where there's unlikely to be a, a real recording. It'll be where the colour bars are and the likes. So hopefully we've lost no important uh, content on this tape. But uh, look at this. There's a lot of um, most unpleasant mould on this tape surface on this first one or two loops on the outside of the supply spool. And even though we can see all this mould on the top, in fact, it was the bottom that snapped, so there's mould clearly on the bottom surface as well. Right, this mould could be hazardous, so it's a good idea to be wearing a face mask whilst doing this. So we have the tape repaired, but if I was to load that, put that back in the shell and play it, it would snap again. So we need to try to clear the mould off here before it goes anywhere near a machine. Now one thing we can do sometimes is just apply a little bit of tension and occasionally, if you're super lucky, the tape will slip round and pull away the mould. 
it doesn't always work. You can cause it to snap and you can cause it to snap internally, which means you get a join uh, on the tape, uh, which will break later when you try to play it. So you really don't want to do this too much, but you can sometimes just apply a little pressure and it'll slip through and it's not doing it this time. So this tape is too moldy for that trick. So uh, I'm going to have to manually peel all the mold off here, which is really painful. I mean, you can do it, you know, by hand like this, but you look how much tape there is on this spool. Very thin tape as well. Take a lifetime. I'm going to do it that way just for the first turn. Oh, this is going to be very hard, I can tell. So it is every bit as thin as 8mm tape, but as wide as normal VHS or beta tape, and very, very long. So I'm going to put this onto my um, Heath Robinson contraption, which is basically a motor. My Heath Robinson contraption over here is basically a motor, or oh, it's a reel drive from a V2000 video recorder. I can sit the beta spool on there and drive it uh, slowly with a small power supply and feed the tape out by hand through my fingers, easing the mould off as I go and also use a vacuum system to suck away any airborne mould and trap it in a filter. Let's have a go at that. So here's my spinning motor in the distance and I'm going to be feeding the tape out in front of this filter. Okay, I managed to get that all onto this spool with no snaps, uh, no complete snaps, until the last just handful of centimetres is way beyond the end of the program material. So I'll splice that on. Now, the reason I wanted to get the whole tape done, even though the actual program material will have finished some point earlier, was that the next thing I want to do with this tape is put it through a Sanyo Betamax video recorder. And they don't lace up during fast forward and rewind. So I can run this tape from end to end several times and it'll help clear the mold that's remaining um, where it's loose and stuck to the edges of the tape before it goes through the beta cam machine. So uh, let's uh, splice it together, reassemble the tape and then, you know, <laughs> People, some people say there's no connection at all between Beta Max and Beta Cam. Well, this proves that there is because I'm going to be using a Beta Max, if you like, domestic Beta video recorder to help me uh, work on this uh, Beta Cam SP tape. Something I particularly want to mention was uh, about the Beta Cam, Beta Max, uh, HD Cam, all these formats use this um, end sensor arrangement. Now, I Sorry, I have to disagree with um, Technology Connections because I love his channel, but he made a complete blunder because he said, oh, look, this is the same as used on 8-track tapes. And he's completely and utterly wrong. It may look the same, but it is not. This uh, is not uh, detected by metal contacts like it is um, on 8-track but by uh, a kind of a resonator that detects the change in um, magnetic flux between this foil and the videotape itself. And it's an extremely reliable uh, auto-stop end detector, more reliable than the optical system used on VHS and some other formats. So I'm sorry, Technology Connections, 
comparing that to eight track was uh, like comparing a uh, you know a a modern EV to uh, a Ford Model T just because they're both made of metal. You know, no different technology. Okay, that uh, is ready to uh, reassemble and run several times through a Sanyo Beta video recorder. So here's the tape uh, at the end position at the moment. Let's put it into this Sanyo Beta and rewind and fast forward it several times to clear any mould off the edges of the tape. Okay, looking at this tape now, it still appears to have mould on it, but it isn't. Some of that mould is on the plastic window, uh, so it's not actually on the tape at all, and some will be just on the very, very edge of the tape, but is not gluing it together. So this tape is now safe to run through the Betacam player and uh, see if we can uh, recover some good quality footage from it. Well, that went quite well. Got fairly good results out of this in the end, limited more by the original recording quality than the, by the mould problem. Now, I suspect most video transfer businesses would have said that tape was a dead loss. What do you think? I hope you've learned something from this. Do please remember to like, share and especially subscribe, and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. <laughs>